We have an instinct as humans to accumulate material wealth and possessions. We have already explained all of that, the neuroscience of consumerism in more detail, in the previous episode of the Money Arata series. But this does not mean that we are doomed to be materialistic. There are other ways of living and organizing societies that prioritize non-material values, such as relationships and community, which leads to greater well-being and happiness. Money Arata Although we are programmed to be consumers and materialistic, societies have other possibilities for organizing themselves and living together well, by looking at examples at the indigenous tribes and the blue zones, we can see that living a non-material lifestyle can lead to greater happiness and well-being. In particular, the Kung, Akka, and Huli, as well as the five blue zones, tend to be uh, having a relatively non-material culture with a focus on community, relationships, and personal achievement. Therefore, Material possessions are not a reliable source of happiness or well-being. With the right mindset, it is possible to move away from a materialistic view and achieve a higher level of happiness without having to prioritize material possessions. Now, please note that this material is not financial advice. Please read the full disclaimer before proceeding. Do you want to live a life free from materialism? See how the tribes around the world do it. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to live in a non-materialistic society? Well, so here's a thought to reflect on. Many societies around the world exist and thrive without the need for excessive material possessions or status. You pay attention to the Kung of the Kalahari Desert in Southern Africa, for example. This hunter-gatherer tribe puts great emphasis on sharing and community, rather than material wealth or status. For the Kung, food is shared among the group and everyone contributes to the community. Similarly, the Akka, another hunter-gatherer tribe living in the Central African jungle, highly value relationships and personal achievement, rather than material possessions. The Akka place a lot of importance on the teachings of their ancestors to seek to understand the spiritual realm while enjoying entertaining themselves with stories and music and dance. And finally, the horticultural huli of Papua New Guinea have a similar outlook. They prioritize relationships and community rather than material wealth or status. The huli are known for their brightly colored costumes and elaborate decorations which highlight their cultural pride and connection to the land. Now, it is important to note that although these societies are not completely non-materialistic, they all have a relatively low emphasis on material wealth and status compared to other societies. So while it is true that material possessions can bring us some degree of pleasure and satisfaction, it is also true that we can be equally happy without consumerism. As we have seen, there are societies that show that it is possible to live in harmony with nature and with our fellow human beings without the need to pursue materialism. But now, maybe, you're thinking that these traps are too exotic and they're very different from you, from your uh, city life. Well, we can also observe some modern societies in the so-called blue zones, and then we can see how they live. The blue zones teach us that it is possible to find identity in connection with the community and not in the possession of material goods. There are parts of the world where people live longer and they have a better life than in other parts. These areas, known as the blue zones, are characterized by relatively non-materialistic cultures that value relationships, community, and personal achievements personal accomplishments much more than material possessions. On the other hand, we who live in highly materialistic cultures tend to prioritize possessions, objects, and wealth as a source of happiness and success. Non-materialistic cultures are associated with greater well-being and happiness because they prioritize values such as relationships, which are important for our physical or mental health. Now, on the other hand, materialistic cultures can be associated with higher stress levels and a sense of um, dissatisfaction due to the pressure to acquire and maintain more and more material goods. 
Okinawa, Japan, is home to one of the world's longest living populations, with many people living over 100 years old. Okinawans practice a culture of minimalism and recycling. They have a strong sense of community, which shows in the celebration of different festivals and rituals. Many older people gather and practice all kinds of activities, including physical exercise and martial arts. There is also the connection to the ancestors and the respect for the dead that is very strong. In the island of Sardinia, Italy, it is also home to an unusually high population of centenarians, many people living over 100 years old. You can't think of Sardinia without thinking of the local food, which is celebrated and shared. It is very common to see people carrying these uh, round loaves of bread, crispy bread, to share with their family and friends. The traditional Sardinian lifestyle includes a diet of locally produced foods and minimally processed foods, as well as this strong sense of community. The culture has many religious festivals that bring the community together. Nicoya in Costa Rica is also home to one of the world's longest living populations. Nicoyans practice a culture of minimalism and reuse, and they also have a strong sense of community, which shows in the celebration of traditional festivals and rituals. Ikaria, Greece, is also home to one of the world's longest living populations, many people also living over a hundred years old. Ikarians practice a culture of minimalism and recycling. They have an emphasis on local production of minimal consumption of processed foods, and their culture has many festivals, many rituals that also bring the community together. And finally, Loma Linda in California. It is home to one of the world's longest living populations. The traditional lifestyle includes a diet of minimally processed foods as well as a strong sense of community. The culture also emphasizes a strong faith, which you can see in the celebration of religious feasts and traditional services. So what can we learn from these blue zones? Happiness doesn't depend on having the latest tech gadget or the fanciest house. It comes from cultivating relationships, finding a purpose in life, living in harmony with the community and the environment. These are the things that really matter, that can bring true joy and lasting satisfaction. So the next time you're feeling stressed out about materialism, about not being able to buy something they really wanted, take a step back. Remember what really matters in life. Having a sense of belonging to a local culture helps you to promote a sense of community and connection. When we feel that we belong to a group, we're more likely to be content and satisfied with what we have. Belonging to a local culture gives us a sense of identity and purpose, as it provides us with a shared history, values, and beliefs. This helps to promote a communal spirit based on mutual understanding, respect, and kindness. It also reduces the need to be consuming and buying luxury goods as a way to find identity in objects and showing displaying your social status. As the focus now is going to be, you know, shared experiences and values. In short, having a strong sense of belonging to a local culture help you to create a more harmonious and uh, satisfied society. Offer the best value possible to others to improve everyone's life and prosper financially. Notice how you are surrounded by messages that encourage you to be buying more and more things. From advertisers to social media influencers, everyone is trying to push you to be buying more and more things. It is it's going to be hard to be resisting the temptation to buy the latest products. But if you want to really enjoy a happier life, it is important to prioritize relationships, community, personal fulfillment over the acquisition of material possessions. The key to this is to strive to build meaningful connections with friends and family and to connect with people in your local community. Spend time taking part in activities that make you happy and fulfilled, such as hobbies, sports, volunteer work. Appreciate the little things in life and be mindful of the present moment. Instead of chasing the next shiny object or trend, practice gratitude and focus on the positive parts of your life. It is easy to fall into the desire to own more, but it is important to remember that these things don't bring true happiness. It is worth making the effort to build meaningful relationships and connect with your local community and take part in activities that satisfy you. Most importantly, you should find a strong sense of purpose, focus your energy, your time, your effort in turning 
that purpose into a project that accumulates a great value for everybody, for the people around you, the more value you offer, improving everyone's life, the more money you will end up making. It is a kind of a paradox. When you don't obsess about money, when you focus on offering the best value possible to others, that's when you find financial prosperity. This is one of the key lessons that you can learn in our financial enrichment course that is available at arata.sc forward slash truly wealthy. So if you're looking for ways to be less susceptible to messages promoting consumerism and the need to buy things and achieve higher social status, the solution is simple. Prioritize relationships, community, personal fulfillment over material goods, material possessions. Make an effort to build meaningful relationships, connect with your local community, take part in activities that really bring you joy and fulfillment. And by doing so, you'll be able to enjoy a more meaningful and happy life. You don't need more to be happy. You just need to learn to value the good things in life. Prioritize community, personal fulfillment, build meaningful relationships, connect with your local community, look for activities that satisfy you. You can enjoy a happy and fulfilling life. And at the same time, you can improve your financial situation if you focus on delivering the best value possible to others. You can learn to have a better relationship with money. And in fact, you can learn to be happy. You can help more people. And in the end, you will have more financial prosperity in your life. That's what is considered to be truly rich. So now I want to invite you to attend a special class visiting the link arata.se forward slash truly wealthy.